real learning for today is who in the world can do this job? <laughs> that was my learning. Um, I, I think the lesson, it did not go in any way like I had planned, although I think some much of the learning that I anticipated to come out did come out. Um, I was, well, I was surprised the minute I turned the video on and the way they wanted to attack that video was interesting. So that figuring out four seconds by doing it like that was not what I was expecting. It was fine. Uh, but that then led them to this idea of dividing 65 by 4 and calling it good. And then they stuck it there. And then even when Lupita and surprised by the kids who weren't doing much, um, but I'm not feeling okay about them not doing much. Um, on the flip side, I think that we have a lot of good, they didn't leave it today, but the, the work that I was looking at has lots of fodder for conversation because they're confusing the X and the Y. You know, they'll, on one they'll have the the independent, the dependent X and Y, and then on the graph they'll have it graph Y and X. Mm -hmm. um, I put one document under the document camera. Didn't even realize that her independent and dependent were backwards, and that one for me, which is one of those who can do this job. Yes. <laughs> um, there are a lot of kids who are doing funny things with graphs by breaking them apart. That needs to be, so I have a lot of opportunity in the work that they will lead me to address some of the misconceptions that they still have. On the flip side, I think that the ones who did engage actually kind of enjoyed it. One of the, the guiding things as we went in there for data was to take a look at how the students persevered, okay? What strategies did you see them using? Getting an answer and stopping. <laughs> um. Can I pause a second? She, she gave you an opening that said, it didn't go any way I planned. I would want to dig deeper. Is what did you, how did you think it was gonna go? Why do you think it didn't go as planned? She obviously has something in her head. She's envisioned this lesson, as we all do when we teach a lesson. <coughs> it didn't go that way. Why do you suppose? Mm -hmm. I would probably want to do that because I would want to think that's where she's digging deeper in her perseverance. Mm -hmm. So I'd ask her, "How did you think it was go? And why don't you think it? Why don't you think the students went the place you thought they might go?" Because the task, um, the way they attacked the task and the way it was structured didn't lend them. Because they, they came up with a four and then they thought, well, now I had this number and since I have this number I can divide or I can do whatever I do with it. Braden did something crazy and couldn't even tell me what he did when he did it. But most of them divided 65 by four and called it good. Um, and so the way that the launch went took them that way in, instead of maybe next time I would give them, you know, watch the video and we know that after the first three video, the three copies was at 27 seconds and five copies or seven copies was at nine seconds, whatever it was, give them those two points and it would probably take me more in the direction I wanted them to go. So that's a modification you would make if you did it again? Yeah. And that's kind of what I envisioned the kids doing, but they went to, oh, look at that, we just did the video in one second. Which is the way they do it in real life, mm -hmm. which since I struggle with how do you, as, as we try to make math education real and meaningful and uh, real world, that's the way they solve it in the real world. So then I go, why in the hell do they need? But 
this is my learning target, damn it. Um, Alright, can we edit the damn? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <So. laughs> that will never go quickly. <laughs> so, so talk to me more about the perseverance part. Or what I'm hearing is you're you're sensing a lack. In some kids, there was a lack of perseverance, and even I was so thrilled when Lupita and Conrad tossed in this idea of 29 and 25, and that gave some room for conversation. And even then, there were I mean, Brittany was like, no, oh, and two one and four, and I'm not going to change it. So then I at least. I said, well, at least that is a mathematician. You have to tell us what your assumptions are. And you have to write that in your work. And she didn't write it down. Can I um, push, pause again? Right. What, ask her questions if you, she had done what I would call a scaffold of what she wants students to do. <coughs> and then she could take it away after they can do it. What it and the scaffold is, see it at a 5, see it at 45, give them those two coordinate points. And see, I, I guess I don't call that a scaffold. I think that, I wouldn't call that a scaffold. I think that is altering the way that a kid engages with the, with the mathematics, which is fine. Um, so I think I would have altered the way that I asked the kids to engage with the math. If that had happened, then the idea of the starting point would have come out differently. And the um, need to use the rate of change formulas would have been more dramatic. I mean, they would have had a need to use them. Um, and I know from yesterday's work that they can do the, the formula, but I also struggle with, if I, if I structure it too much like a word problem, then I'm not having them keep learning all math. So at, at what point? Uh, <coughs> If you're talking in a workshop mode of catch and release, do you pull them back in and give them certain parameters to the problems that might? Well, I think that's what happened with Lupita and, and Conrad. And, but once they were at the answer, many of them were just done. Not all of them, but many of them stopped there. And I, I think that goes back to the heart of believing that mathematics is about getting an answer, and that once they're, they're done, when we've taught them, when you're done with the answer, you solve the problem, you're good. I think that's just what we've ingrained in them over 18 years of education, 12 years of mm -hmm. education. Um, so how do I undo that? I don't know. I don't know how you undo And it's what I think in order to get to perseverance, we have to make them believe I mean, Brayden, I said, um, so are you changing your thinking? Because he had 14 on the week. 65 by 4 was 14, so his rate of change was 14, and talked to me about that. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I said, do you understand what their way of thinking is? Yeah. And I said, so are you changing your thinking? Well, I, I guess I could. Because though it was like sacrilege to change mm -hmm. the way you think. So, um, Alex was worried about me putting up her work because she had changed her thinking, and I wanted to, I wanted the kids to see. She started here, and she changed her thinking, so I showed both of them at the same time. Michael did the same thing. Why do you think she was hesitant to show her work because she changed her mind? I don't know if it's because she changed her mind. She was or hesitant to let thinking. me show her work, and I don't know if it's because there are people in the room, but I, I, I would hypothesize she changed, she didn't want to see that she had gotten it wrong and then that she had changed her way of thinking. Even though she didn't get it wrong, she just had a different set of parameters that she was working under. And how, how would you see that relating to her making sense of the problem? Oh, I think it's because she changed the way she made sense of the problem. That they, if, if the problem started at print, then dividing by four is absolutely fine. So that it's not that they that, that way of thinking about the problem, they made sense of that problem. What they didn't make sense of is whether or not that 29 seconds needed to be included. So they were making sense of a problem, and they were making fine sense of a problem with one way of thinking about it. And they they just had a different problem. And so I think, going back to Ted's question, 
what I wanted them to do was engage in the bigger problem instead of that minus 29 second problem. And so I had to set the problem up differently to have them address that 29 seconds. In our, in our pre-meeting, there were, um, you had mentioned multiple representations of the problem and that there was a thought that possibly uh, one of the representations, I think it was a graph, would not be shown. Why did you think that? Because they, they wouldn't see it as a way of predicting. So, and I had kids say, well, I can't make the graph all the way up to 65, that's too big. And that was my thinking, is they would say, well, on my table, I only go to 10. My graph has to go all the way to 65 to be able to use it as a prediction. Several of them did, and so that gives us, again, an opportunity to go back in and show this is how a graph might help you if you're solving a problem, that, but you'd have to rechange change the scale um, on both sides to make it fit on your graph paper. With relationship to what you were trying to achieve today, where do you think you would go next? I am going back to straight rows and drilling hill because this is how we do that. <laughs> 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 um, I, I going back and figuring out the um, what to do with the work. I I think I, I want to continue to give harder problems. They need them. And I do see more perseverance on this one than I did on the last one, and certainly than I saw on the Starburst problem. There's more in the room because we're giving them harder problems. We're not there yet. We'll continue to work on that. Uh, but I, I really, and I've never known, what do you do with uh, a Stasek who isn't going to write anything down, or Cameron who isn't going to, he wasn't there today, but he comes in and he sleeps and he drinks his Mountain Dew because he doesn't sleep at home and I don't know. I don't know what to do with him. And those are the kids that really, when I don't see perseverance, is out of kids who have chosen for whatever reason not to want to engage. Um, and I, I continue to think, what do I do to help them want to engage more? I believe in my heart that giving them real world problems will do that. But because they're so well trained that a worksheet is easy, they actually engage much more if I give them mindless work. And that's my connection. I want a yellow card myself here <laughs> while I kind of make a, a comment and a wondering with regards to um, their, their comfort with regards to coming to an answer and stopping, is that not a signal? I have a question. Is that not a signal that they have made sense of the problem for themselves? Yeah. I have made sense of it. I've come to an answer, and um, I want to stick to it out of the confidence. So I, it may even be a positive. I have confidence okay. that I came to a point mathematically that is correct. Now, the issue becomes with that loading the printer time period and what are you going to do with that or whether you're even contemplating is this part of the problem. So um, that expanded mathematical thought is always the... Right. I, I think that sometimes it is I'm satisfied with my answer. Other times it's I have an answer. Check. Now moving on to the next thing. Uh, because that's what we that's how we play school. Yeah. I I think that it, this is a more unique situation where we've been before where I think she solved her own problem but she doesn't know she solved her own problem. Before she solved her own problem and she knew it was her next step. She knows that uh, I know that the, next, the, one, the, the one that I'm feeling is make sure the task I'm giving is really the task that's going to get me to the mathematics I want to have addressed. And today, I, the task did not lend itself. <coughs> and your belief that more they engage in rich tasks, the better they're going to get at doing them. Yes. There's your next step. Although it doesn't feel very good. <laughs> <laughs> right. because, well, because, and, truly because 
everywhere I went today, I mean, the first time I got flipped upside down was when they said, let's do this four seconds. Okay, there was a first flip. Then I'm walking around, and they all have this stuff going with zero, one, and four. And I'm going, now what? So then I get this thing on the document camera, and God or somebody intervened and threw Lupita right in my path. And now we have something new into the room. The number of decisions I was making, and every time I made a decision, my, my whole plan went upside down again. And, you know, we're done. It. It's 8.10. I'm going, hmm, now we're done. Now what? Like six <coughs> times that happened. And I'm going, wow, this is just too hard. That's really, when I was done, that's what I felt like. It's like too many decisions and too many points where... There's so much information, and I'm trying to deal with every single kid in the room, trying to figure out what they know, look at their work, go, hmm, which of this work is going to help lead our storyline in the right direction, and then is anybody learning anything? I mean, it's like, that's what's going in my head. But it is the right, I still believe in my heart, it's the right mathematics to do, and setting up the tasks so that they are doing the mathematics that I need them to be doing differently today would have been helpful. So clarify for me. Okay, let's let's flip the table a little bit and put you under the microscope, which we're doing anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> what strategies did you use when you got stuck? Uh, I I looked for student work that was going to help move the conversation. So I, I tried to I I had to, the one and four and the zero and four because I thought at least that gave us an opportunity for something to compare and to think about. Uh, I had gone and gotten Mix and, or Michael's and Kelsey's paper because they had, Michael had done the time on the x-axis and copies on the y-axis and she had done one or seconds and anyway. They had a totally different way of thinking about it and I had those on the document camera. And I went, I mean, you guys all saw me, I went, oh, I don't want to go there. So I went and grabbed another piece of paper and I said, this is the one I want to go with. But all of that, those decisions are like this and they completely impact. So then once that, pay, and I decided at that point, what I wanted was to stay more in line with the rest of the class instead of throwing a different way of thinking because I was afraid if I threw a different way of thinking in, we were really going to be in a mess. So I pulled up the paper that was more in line with what we were thinking and had some conversation. So every time I went to the student work to, to see if there was something out there that's going to bail me out. <coughs> now just from, this is outside probably the box of what we're primarily talking about, but you know, you've been focusing in on guiding the mathematical thought of the students that are in there. What about strategies for kids that were not engaged? And that's the question. I, That's truly a, a wonder I have. I did not set up strong protocols today about making sure every kid shared out their thinking. I did not. Um, I was going to have them make a poster of their thinking, but the groups were in totally different places. So there was not interdependence today um, in their thinking. So I don't know. Okay. I'm going to pause. <laughs> I'm going to pause again and say, my observation is, is that there are things that you do at the beginning of class is, is one prime example where you have a question of the day, where you're talking about something that is not mathematical, that really is uh, delving into the personal perspective of the student. <coughs> Today's question, what tattoo would you get and where would you... Where, because James is a tattoo artist. You know, I've never met today. But, the tool of, of having a, a conversation with a student yeah. that is on a personal level that may not be mathematical, I think is a first step or a strategy for developing a relationship so that the student who really is unengaged typically, okay, is going to go, that person kind of cares about me. And so, okay, I'll step out there and try to do some of the mathematical thinking for them. I mean, it, it becomes... But James, it was all about James today, and he yeah. said it didn't work. 
Yeah. Just so you can stop before let me angry. let me interject again. It's, she's defining her solutions. She doesn't feel like she's defining right. them. She's defining them. One is that she normally she thinks about how this is different going from problems that are real world to problems that weren't. She defined as I need to make sure that the storyline gets done and the kid work before she would go to multiple ways of seeing the same problem. She knows now that until they're ready, she needs to guide the storyline in the kid work. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Two, she realized the protocols became more important again because they're in a new way of thinking. So her next steps are the things she's already discovered. Right. The story, now you can see when you're going to look, I want a storyline that's really scripted. <coughs> I'm not going to script it. I'm going to script it in the kid's work. I'm not going to have different ways of thinking about it yet. That can repeat it. I gotta keep on going because this is the right way. <laughs> I gotta, me that I gotta script the storyline like you said through the student work, and I gotta set up more protocols in this world because when they got to it, they kind of collapsed in the group work. Mm -hmm. So, she, like when we before, she goes, "Okay, I know what my next step is." She's saying it, but she's not. She's not really like believing in it. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> would say is that. But affirm those things is what intuitively she knows as a teacher is the right places. Script the storyline through the student work and set up the protocols and, and persevere through the uncertainty that you want the students to do. So you're saying paraphrase. What she's thinking saying. Back to her. What, when she's saying it, then frame it into steps mm -hmm. to go forward. Is when she's kind of like, oh, God, roads are so much easier. <laughs> and, but she's saying all the things that she needs to do. She's just right now not in the moment to believe them because she's so raw into the experience right. that right. it went sideways of what she expected it to do. Right. It so turned her. Yeah, and I, I'm not unhappy with the way the math went. What, what was so striking to me today and what I really feeling is this work is so complex <laughs> because there's so many decisions you're making every minute that's what's really going on in my head and so um, the question I have which is um, broader than all of this and it's for me and when I think about the teacher and you talk about the difficulty that you're experiencing as you're <coughs> going through this procedure um, we're looking at a lesson, which is a unique little picture that we don't have to say, but you're functioning on a calendar, too. And you're supposed to arrive somewhere. And that's the real challenge that I don't have an answer for for the teacher, is that your next steps all consume time. Right. And it's re the reconciliation of the what's the appropriate next step with the bigger picture. But in my heart, I believe that if I spend time teaching them to persevere and really continue to work on that, it will save me time. Because if I don't have to fight them every day to, to engage, <coughs> then I'll end up saving time. So I continue to believe that's the opposite. Mm -hmm. Although it doesn't feel it, it it's right. the opposite. If I continue on this path, I'll have better success with so, your frustration, which you expressed at the beginning of the conversation, you are now, I'm hearing you say, no, I, I that, believe that <laughs> you really do believe really that do. the correct, you, you do know the next steps and um, how to put them into place and that the students will benefit from that. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> so we can turn off the little ones and if we all want to come back. Is it the red button? Yes. <laughs>